Can you compute this using standard integration techniques? I'll be honest, if you can, I'll be very, very impressed. What you learn in calculus probably won't do the job for this, but we could compute this integral if we just take away the natural logarithm. This is just the opposite of the power rule. Add one to the power, divide by the new power, and we can just evaluate using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And if we wanted to be a little bit more general, well, we could just do this with the variable n instead of having an exponent of 100. It works out the exact same way, and we get the answer in the exact same way too. Notice that this is an equality. So if I differentiate one side, it's the same as differentiating the other. And I'm going to take the derivative, the partial derivative, with respect to n. And this is the trick I'm really trying to show you here. The fact that we can take this partial derivative inside the integral. This is known as differentiating under the integral. It's often called the Feynman trick or the Leibniz rule for integrals. Taking the derivative with respect to n, we have to remember our rules for differentiating exponential functions. This derivative is x to the n natural log x. This isn't the power rule. We're differentiating with respect to n here. So this is an exponential function with base x. And interestingly enough, we've solved a similar type of problem we had before. It's just we only have the natural log x to the first instead of to the hundredth. But what if we kept going? What if we took the derivative of both sides again? Well, on the left, we would just move the derivative inside the integral. We'd take the derivative of x to the n again, which would be x to the n times ln x, and we'd have ln x squared. You could multiply these numbers together in the numerator on the right-hand side, but I think I'll leave them like this so that we can see the pattern. Keep taking derivatives like this. Our third derivative, we'd have x to the n ln x cubed on the left-hand side, and on the right, minus 1 cubed times 3 factorial over n plus 1 to the fourth. See if you can notice the pattern. If we took 100 derivatives, we would get on the left-hand side something very close to the original integral we were trying to solve. And the pattern on the right, minus 1 to the 100th times 100 factorial over n plus 1 to the power of 101. And now we have a function that gives us this integral for whatever power of x we'd like. In particular, we wanted x's power to be 100. So let's just substitute 100, we'll have the integral we're interested in, and we get the result as well. Let's do another example so you can really see more about how this trick works. Here's a fairly challenging integral. I don't know how you would do this without using this trick. What we'd like to do is differentiate under the integral sign in a way that it makes our problem easier. To do that, we're going to have to define a new function so that when we take the derivative, it's a different variable than t. Let's define things this way. Why do it this way? Well, again, for the same reason, when we take the derivative of t to the x, it's t to the x, natural log t. The derivative of 1 is 0, but the point is that the natural logarithm functions cancel out. And this is really the point of the trick. You want to take derivatives to either create the situation you want or create an easier situation for yourself. Now we have the derivative of our defined function as the definite integral from 0 to 1, but we're integrating with respect to t, Again, we can do this just using the fundamental theorem of calculus, applying the reverse power rule, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and substitute these variables. The difference here is that our result is actually the derivative of the function we really want. So really, we have to integrate this. If we take the antiderivative of 1 over x plus 1, it's natural log absolute value of x plus 1, and we need a constant plus c. 
This works out pretty nicely because if we substitute zero, natural log of one is zero, and so c is zero as well, our function is just natural log absolute value of x plus one. Now we can substitute anything we want. If we wanted to compute our original question, which had a t to the 10th, just substitute 10, it'll be natural log of 11. Or just as easily, you could solve this integral with a t to the 100th by plugging in 100, and it would be natural log of 101.